Back in Baltimore on a cloudy Sunday afternoon, 64 degrees, some rain earlier today. Mike McCarthy in his eighth season as Packers head coach. Green Bay with a record of two and two. Coming off the win over the Lions at home last Sunday. John Harbaugh's Ravens at three and two. 26-23 victory in Miami. Ravens have won the toss. They have elected to defer. So Justin Tucker will get things started. We have Jonathan Franklin back deep for the Packers. And we are underway in Baltimore. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers will start from their own 20-yard line. Yeah, he's, he's been pretty emphatic about the identity of the Packers offense being a spread style with three wide receivers. Jermichael Finley, that big target. But I think with the conditions today, he's going to be very happy that his run game is much improved this season. Packers have rushed for 180 yards each of the last two weeks. Eddie Lacy, the rookie out of Alabama, in the backfield. Three wide receivers set for the Packers from the 20-yard line. On first down, this is Lacey, who spins across the 25, out to the 30-yard line. He gained 99 yards on the ground last week against the Detroit Lions. Now, that being said about this group running the ball more effectively, I think, I think it's time to see the skill set on this offense start to contribute. Aaron Rodgers, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and he's got a heck of a skill group working that outside in the passing game. Packers quickly to the line. On first down, the toss. This is Lacey again. Big hole, and Eddie Lacey is across midfield. Throws a stiff arm at Jimmy Smith, who finally brings him down at the Ravens' 33-yard line as Lacey goes for 37. And he's a big-body guy, and you think of that physical in-between-the-tackle runner, but watch the decision. The foot goes into the ground, and the change of direction. You get all that flow going. It's a tremendous block from the backside by David Bakhtiari to kind of collapse everything down, and Eddie Lacy's out the back. His longest run of the season are now on first down. Rodgers complete to Jordy Nelson, who stays in bounds and tiptoes down the sidelines to the Ravens. 27-yard line. I think one of the things that really jumps out at you when you see these defensive players for the Ravens, there's a lot of faces missing from last year's Super Bowl championship team. But let me tell you what, they're playing well. They're starting to hit their stride. This is a typical physical Ravens defense. Packers have gained 54 yards on their first three plays. Rodgers taking his time, second down and three. Three wide receivers set. Rodgers fires and Nelson unable to make the catch. Lardarius Webb on the coverage. Third and three coming up. Now, let me tell you, you don't see this very often. This group of wide receivers, tremendous at the point of the catch. Jordy Nelson, it's a quick little slant. He's right there. Packers, one of the best teams in the league. Number two with the fewest drops coming into today's game. And that defensive line did a nice job of getting some push up there for the Ravens. To affect that throw. Rodgers on third down and three. Quick release. And the pass is broken up by Josh Bynes. It's been one of the Achilles heels of the Green Bay Packers offense this year. Whether it's red zone or red zone fringe, they have a great drive down the field and then they stall here. Pass intended for the tight end, Jermichael Finley. So here is Mason Crosby, who tied a franchise record last Sunday with five successful field goals, the reigning NFC Special Teams Player of the Week. And Crosby connects from 45 yards out. He has now hit 14 in a row. Here in Baltimore, six plays, 53 yards. Eddie Lacy with a 10-yard run on the first play from scrimmage. And then the 37-yard run, longest run allowed by the Ravens' defense this season. Yeah, and then you get down into that part of the field where you're scoring, and you wonder why you get away from that style that got you there in the first place. Absolutely. Big drop by Jordy Nelson. That, that was, to me, that was the most surprising play. There's Jacoby Jones, who missed the last four games. Suffered a right knee injury. Week one against Denver. Jones on the move. 
Brings it out across the 20. And is finally forced out of bounds. 30-yard return by one of the best in the business, Jacoby Jones. Yeah, and it's one of the reasons why we need to keep an eye on the return game today, whether it's Jacoby Jones and kickoff return, what they do on punt return. When you have injuries at your linebacker position, you lose those cover guards, those cover guys. It has a big impact on your defense and your coverage. Super Bowl 47 most valuable player, Joe Flacco, has already thrown eight picks this year. Only two fewer than all of last season. Ravens start from the 30 two-yard line on first down Ray Rice gains a yard time for a game break with Kurt Menefee Kurt well the first score of the game came on the opening drive Philadelphia against Tampa Bay Nick Foles getting the start runs it in from four yards out and just like that his Eagles are up seven nothing over the Bucks Kenny you loosen deuce all right thanks Kurt Eagles tied for first place with the Dallas Cowboys at two and three oh, the oh. NFC East wow. Wow. never thought we'd see that this year no way on second down, Flacco looked to throw. He swings it out to Rice. And a nice tackle made by Jamari Lattimore, making his first NFL start. Well, the big change this week for the Baltimore Ravens is Eugene Monroe in at left tackle. Brian McKinney struggling through the first part of the season. We'll see what this does, not only in pass protection, but also the running game, getting this Baltimore Ravens offense to become a little bit more consistent. Rice lost two yards on the previous play. Now third down and ten. Ravens must get to the 42. Watch formation to the right. Black on third down. Packers bring the pressure, and it's A.J. Hawk who wraps up Flacco. Packers had five sacks a week ago against Detroit. First of the season for Hawk. Let's take a look at this and see if A.J. Hawk is reading some stuff and then kind of attacking that front as the linebacker, as the running back goes to block. You got three Packers in the backfield there. Some breakdowns in communication. That's one thing you don't want to have when you have a new adjustment with your offensive line is that where it looks where your protection scheme did not hold up because of communication across the front. A.J. Hawk is very patient on that also, waiting for his defensive line to get some opening uh, little creases there that took it on a delayed blitz. Sam Cook's punt fielded at the 32 by Micah Hyde. And a nice tackle. Getting downfield on special teams. Shockey Brown holding Webb to a three-yard return after the sack by Hawk. Linebackers also running back James Starks out once again. And for the Ravens, Bryant McKinney replaced as a starter by Monroe, inactive, as well as Brandon Stokely. Inside handoff to Lacey on first down, and he crosses the 35 for a gain of two. And the Ravens are going to want to stop this running game, the success that they had on that opening drive. It will become a very physical game if you allow that offense to start building their confidence in the ability to run the football. And the Packers decide to go in a little short huddle back on the line of scrimmage. They're going to keep this pace up here. Haloti Nada left the field. Punched over on the Ravens sideline. Second down and eight on the slant. It is James Jones picks up a Packers first down out to the 46. What you will see during the course of the game today is the Ravens will be in position to make plays. They'll be in good coverage, but they know that that's not enough. Aaron Rodgers' accuracy is one of the best in the NFL. First and ten from the 46, it's Lacey. And he gets tripped up by Webb. Gain of just one. Out to the 47. Well, when you go against the Packers, it's not just one guy. James Starks got it started against the Redskins with 132. Jonathan Franklin the following game, and then we had Eddie Lacey last week right at the cusp of 100 yards with 99. James Jones, the injured Packer. Second and ten for Green Bay. When we return to Baltimore. James Jones, Packers wide out, injured on the last play. And on the other side, Lodi Nada, who left the field a couple of plays ago. An elbow strain his return is probable. Putting a brace on that elbow right now. 
Yeah, those defense alignment, they think they, it's been hard to get them guys out. They're tough, Darrell. I don't know if you knew that. We've heard. <laughs> Off the play, fake on second down, Rogers sacked back at the 38-yard line. Arthur Jones, third sack of the season, loses his helmet, lost at six. Ah, uh, you just talk about power. I mean, he just pushed this all the way back, right into the lap of Aaron Rodgers. Actually, one more inside, 97. Working on Jermichael Finley on the inside. Yeah, they're working the games in there, bringing the pressure. Rodgers stood in that pocket a little bit longer than he... He should have. He should have got rid of that ball a little bit early. Had a receiver open downfield. Third down and 16. This is Lacey. And he's tackled at the 46-yard line. So the Packers forced to punt it away. Courtney Upshaw bringing down Lacey. That's such a big play for a defensive lineman when you get those little screen passes on the outside. They teach you to come up field, keep your pass rush going, and then retrace your steps. That's exactly what Upshaw does and makes a nice play. Tandon Doss back deep for the Ravens. Tim Maste punching from his own 35-yard line. Doss lets it go. Ravens will start from the 20, 55-yard kick, 35 net. And now, meet your Fox Tuesday night starting lineup. Seth Green, Daz, yeah! Jake Johnson, new girl. Ike Barinholtz, the male nurse on the Mindy Project. Yeah. Terry Crews, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. All new comedies starting Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Not that intimidating. I don't know. <laughs> the last guy. I backed up in the booth a bit. Stay tuned. Play action on first down. Flacco to Rice out of the backfield. Rice throwing a stiff arm. And picks up a Ravens first down. The big challenge today is going to be at the linebacker level. Had a chance to talk to Kevin Green today. He feels confident in his guys out there. You're also going to have Nick Perry in there trying to help out. But he said to keep an eye on Andy Malumba, who will come in from time to time. Kind of a raw outside linebacker type that's going to be coming hard off the edge. Kevin Green, Packers linebackers coach. One of the all-time top sack men in the National Football League as Rice Games a yard, there's Kevin. Yeah, how lucky are these guys to have Kevin Green as their coach played against him? He was a handful coming off the edge. It wasn't fair when he got matched up with running backs. We we like we could. The, the old timers, Marino and Elway, didn't like that man very much. You got that right, Goose. Midway through the first quarter, Packers lead 3 0. Three wide receivers set for the Ravens. Flacco. Fires downfield, and it's broken up by Devon House. Pass was intended for the rookie out of Georgia, Marlon Brown. Yeah, but we're having opportunities missed by the Green Bay Packers here. We had the drop by Jordy Nelson. Let's see if this is interception opportunity. He plays it perfect. He's underneath. Absolutely. you got to make that catch. Great opportunity to take the ball away. But now third down and 10 for the Ravens. They must get to the 41-yard line for a first down. Blacko steps up and throws wide open Jacoby Jones. Jones with a first down and more to the Packers' 37-yard line. Finally tackled by Teron McMillan after a gain of 31. When you watch Joe Flacco play quarterback, the thing that jumps out to me is his calmness in the pocket, even courage in the pocket. And he told us that, you know, he, I find that soft spot, the area that gives me the most time. He's very, very comfortable as that pocket breaks down. He never looks, his eyes never stop following downfield, man. He's always looking for a receiver. He doesn't pay any attention to all those defense linemen and linebackers with the pocket collapsing around him. That's not an easy thing to do. No, now he takes, he's taken some shots this year, too. And, and I tell you what, nothing makes you respect your quarterback more. He gets up, dusts himself off. He never complains. He never calls people out about protection, about taking those hits. Just lines up on the next play and keeps playing. Yeah, that helps him out a lot in that pocket, I'll tell you. Tall guy. 
Second down and nine off the fake to Rice. Pass is complete, but a terrific tackle made by A.J. Hawk on the tight end, Billy Badger, but no gain on the play. And he's really coming into his own as the inside guy for the Packers. This is just great instincts, recognizing the play, finding the guy who's going to be trailing Billy Bajima on that bootleg, understanding the concept of the play, and then crossing that field, making the tackle. Look at the wrap-up, too. Take Takes his home, legs man. away. That's it. Tackle right around the waist, wrap those arms around, and run through the tackle. That's the proper way. Great job. Third down and nine. Blacko with time. He throws it again. It's House. Pass intended for Marlon Brown. Devon House with his second pass defense on this drive. Good coverage here. He's left in the middle of the field all by himself. You see as he slides over, working the inside part of that slot. A lot of contact there. Now what's going to happen is, you know, keep playing that way. Now challenge the officials to if you're going to play physical and it's going to be a lot of contact in the passing game, continue to do that until you get that flag on pass interference. There's the punter, Sam Cook. This would be a 55-yard field goal attempt. Ravens send out the punting unit. With Randall Cobb back deep for the Packers. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers will start from their own 20-yard line, leading the Ravens. James Jones caught an 83-yard touchdown pass from Aaron Rodgers last week. This return is questionable due to a leg injury replaced by Jarrett Boykin. There's Haloni, not a 92. He has returned for the Ravens. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. Play action. Rodgers moving to his right under pressure. And then he throws it out of bounds. As dangerous as Aaron Rodgers is in the pocket, every time we have the opportunity to do a Green Bay game, the defense worries about him when he's outside the pocket. Let's take a look at the coverage. Jimmy Smith working on Jared Boykin on the backside. And it happens when it breaks down, they call it plaster. Now you got to stay with him. That's a nice job by the Ravens secondary when that play broke down. Yeah, because those wide receivers do not stop running routes and try to get open there. Second and ten. Randall Cobb, first down, out to the 37-yard line. He was tackled by Matt Elam after a gain of 18. I think there's a lot of trust right here with Randall Cobb and Aaron Rodgers. He's crossing into the middle of the field from that slot. He's going to where all the big guys are, <laughs> and he, he's not afraid at all. Nice catch and run on that play. And he did help from big guy to Michael Philly to get his shoulder pad back in. Now the toss to Lacey. Eddie Lacey. And a big run on the Packers' first possession. Takes it out to the 45-yard line. Gain of eight. Go back and take a look at that injury to James Jones. Here he comes from the outside in. I want you to see he's going to get clipped right here. And you can see that leg hyperextend a little bit on that knee. That's the deep end of the pool, Darrell. We talk about it all the time. Those little guys want to get in there. Not a place for them. Rodgers on second and two. Can't find anyone. Now he throws a diving attempt. It is made by Finley Elam on the coverage. He's, he's got tremendous feet in the pocket. He's so calm. He's just like Flacco. Watch Aaron Rodgers on this. Just these little hops and moves around, buys his time, finds the soft spot to get outside. Those big guys for the, for the Ravens doing a nice job with the push because I think that's where Aaron really feels the pressure, when it's right in front of him. But like you said, Dow, he does a great job of escaping. they got to keep him corralled. Third down and two. Play clock at three. Rogers in trouble, loses the football. Packers able to recover, but forced to punt it away. Don Barclay on the recovery, second sack of Rogers. Well, this is a nice job by the Ravens. They're adding some pressure. Here come your two linebackers now during the course of the season up to this point. When they brought the blitz, they've kind of got torched a little bit. So here's some good signs for the Ravens defense early on getting home when they brought pressure. So Elvis Doomerville wrapped up Rodgers. Haste punching from his own 30-yard line. 
Doss lets it go, bounces into the end zone for a touchback. 60-yard punt, 40 net. Late first quarter in Baltimore. Packers by three. Down, taking a look at some pitchers over there, trying to figure out what's happened. And this Ravens defense has done a nice job since that opening series when they had a couple of nice running plays. Uh, very effective getting some pressure on Aaron Rodgers. Bernard Pierce, Ravens leading rusher this season in the backfield, first and ten from the 20 yard line. And this is Pierce, nowhere to run. BJ Raji along with Jamari Lattimore. That's on one the guy you better block in the middle there. I tell you what, these, these there's some big guys out on that field today. BJ Raji is a big guy, but he's very, very quick and very, very athletic. He was into the backfield immediately on that play. Loss of three. Raji, a pro bowler two seasons ago. That's his defense for the big man. Yes. Hey, he's not that tall. He's got a lot of leverage being shorter. He's only six foot two. He gets up under, man. He got some wheels. Second down at 13. Flacco fires downfield. Pass intended for Marlon Brown. And again, it is Devon House on the coverage. That was great coverage, I'll tell you. You know what? But the other thing, Joe Flacco has a tremendous amount of confidence in his guys. Marlon Brown, is he's one of those guys where he's going to give him the opportunity. He's big, he's physical, good hands on the outside. I'll throw a jump ball situation in a one-on-one. -on -one. He's he, The confidence that he has in his guys down the field is impressive. Brown at six foot five. That's the third pass broken up by Devon House today. Should have an, uh, an interception along with that. Now third down and 13. This is Doss. Not nearly enough. So the Ravens will punt it away. Gain of six, Burnett and Hawk on the tackle of Tandon Doss, who actually tried out for the Packers back in early September. He was cut by the Ravens, and then he was re-signed a week later. So Sam Cook will punt for the third time. Just over two minutes remaining, first quarter in Baltimore. Micah Hyde is back deep for the Packers. Wow, nice punt. Taken at the 23 by Hyde. He stays on his feet. And is down just shy of the 30. A 54-yard punt by Cook. Nice defensive play on first down by B.J. Rachi. by Brandon Williams as the Packers start from the 30-yard line John Kuhn with his first carry today returned to the lineup last week and missed previous game in Cincinnati no offensive plays though just on special teams last week so good to see him back at the yeah, line offense, absolutely. Right? well this is going to help them in their pass protection second down at eight Rodgers dumps it off this is Jonathan Franklin. Out to the 39. Time for a game break. Here's Kurt. And this is the Bengals' Andy Dalton's first touchdown pass since week three. Helps to have a guy like A.J. Green on the other end. 18 yards on the score. And the Bengals were up three in the first quarter on Buffalo. Kenny Moose and Goose. Thanks, Kurt. Cincinnati in a three-way tie atop the AFC North with the Browns and these Ravens. Third down and one for the Packers. Franklin lined up to the right of Rodgers. Play clock at two. Rodgers calls timeout. One of the things that has impressed me about this defense through the course of the early part of this season is how well they've played losing so many guys tony talked about the leadership with ray lewis and ed reed going but look at the production that they are trying to replace on this defense and you watch them on tape and they are playing very very well you know i think you, you throw out the denver game on, on opening night it was 17 14 and a half and then denver denver's been doing that to everybody so as as they're starting to grow that's week one you've got all these new new faces and new places on the defensive side of the ball from week to week you see them getting better and better on yeah. defense they're showing five defensive players who played every snap in the super bowl no longer 
with the Ravens. And there's one of the newcomers, Elvis Dumaville, who has a sack today. Third down and one, following the timeout. The toss to Jonathan Frank, and he slips. Back at the 35-yard line, there's James ahead of ball, who is right there. Packers will punt it away. Well, James Ahedabo does a good job of getting inside. Watch Jordy Nelson. He's responsible. He's got to get down in there and get that done. He can't. James Ahedabo is just up the field immediately, forces the cut back inside in the slip. Time winding down in this first quarter as the Packers get set to punt for the third time. Mason Crosby with a 45-yard field goal on the opening possession. Green Bay Packers lead the Baltimore Ravens by the score of 3-0. Forget what it's like to go and tackle people. Packers perhaps think maybe we should have kept this guy when he tried out for us back in early September. Now Flacco's pass on first down was behind the antenna receiver, Dallas Clark. One of the big things we'll keep an eye on today is the battle on first down. You look at Green Bay, one of the best in the NFL on first down, had those two big runs to start the game. No rushing yards for the Ravens. Only 36 in all in the first quarter. That was the first pass by Flacco that was not broken up by Devon House. And now a false start. Our Ball first start. flag of the afternoon. Offense, number 86, five-yard penalty, second down. That's on Billy Badgema. He lined up in the backfield and then went, moved over to the, uh, move over to the line. Just couldn't hold his ground. Billy Badgema, who was re-signed this week, he's already been cut three times since the end of the preseason, yet he has played in every game. I have to nickname him Yo-Yo. <laughs> Ozzie Newsom's been pretty busy with releasing guys and bringing it back. Oh, this whole year. He's not missed a game despite, he, despite <laughs> getting cut three times since the end of August. Second and 15 following the penalty. Blanco dumps it off. This is Pierce. There is a flag. Legal use of hands, hands to the face, offense. Number 73, 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. That's the right guard, Marshall Yonda. Right here on the right side of your screen. Just got to get it off. You can make initial contact there, but you got to pull it back down. Can't leave it on there. So no penalty flags thrown on either side of the first quarter. And now two in a row against the Ravens. Second down and 25 as the Ravens set up the screen. This is Pierce. And Pierce takes it out to the 34-yard line. A gain of eight. Lattimore the tackle. It's going to be hard to screen on both of these defenses because they have great recognition. They have a great feel. And then pursuit is part of what's built into their defense as a standard. That everybody runs to the football. Third down and 17. Ravens bust cross midfield to the Packers 49. Here's Pierce once again. And Pierce is chased down by M.D. Jennings. Stopped about two yards shy of the marker. So for the fourth time, Ravens sent out the punting unit. Starting to drizzle a little bit here down on the field. So keep an eye on the footing. Rained earlier, about two hours prior to kickoff. Micah Hyde back deep for the Packers. Early second quarter, Green Bay with a 3-0 lead. Cook from his own 38. Another good kick. What a job by Cook here in the first half. He can't do that any better right there. No. Little spin on it. 46 yards, perfect placement. Mike McCarthy's Packers 
with a three nothing lead will start from their own six Lacey remember gave 47 on the first two plays from scrimmage not much for the Packers since and now it's Lacey out to the 11 yard line for a gate of five and a great opportunity here for some complimentary team football for the Baltimore Ravens and James Jones is going into the locker room now with that knee that he hyperextended earlier in the game you can see how stiff that is but special teams backs up your opposition defense come out make a big stop here give your offense the ball back with good field position screen remains in for Jones. Packers empty the backfield. Second down at five. Rodgers looking left. Wrapped up. Down he goes. Ball comes loose. Boykin has it. And then he's tackled by Corey Graham. So for the Ravens, it's their third sack of Rodgers over the first 18 minutes and one of the more difficult things is is you're able to get home with four for the baltimore ravens let's see how many they send this time it's just the four so now your other seven guys are back in coverage there's the strip I, jared boykin look at it. he's all the way down here this is tremendous hustle heads up play the ball wasn't out but he was still moving back that's a big play to save that fumble recovery from get the ravens getting a hold of it second sack for Doolittleville. Third down and 10. Quick release to Randall Cobb. And it's Daryl Smith who chases him down. But Cobb is out across the 17. Picks up a Packers first down. Oh, big missed opportunity for the Ravens yeah. defense right there on a third and long. That's where you got to run to the ball. You know they're going to go the little quick out. You got to run to the ball and solidify that tackle, not give him the first down. And now the Packers again quickly up to the line. And Rodgers' pass is short. It was behind the antenna receiver, Jordy Nelson. The reason why they got that pass or that uh, playoff so fast, Rodgers wanted to speed the, the play up so they didn't have an opportunity to go and challenge the spot of the ball on the outside and make sure it was a first down or not. Second and ten. Packers without James Jones, who has been ruled out. He will not return due to the leg injury suffered in the first quarter. Here's Eddie Lacy. Lacy gains three. So it will be third down and seven. And we've talked about the injuries on the defensive side. Green Bay losing Clay Matthews and Brad Jones last week and now without one of their top receivers and james jones was the player for the green bay packers it broke that game open last week against the detroit lions with some the, the big touchdown catch and then another big catch later on in that second half it's funny they're, they're huddling up but all the receivers are staying out wide not coming into the huddle so they must have a play called already third down and seven Packers must get to the 29, and they cannot. Pass is intended for a diving. Jarrett Boykin, the all-time leading receiver at Virginia Tech. So the Packers once again will punt. Well, you've got a new guy in the lineup, number 11 down here at the bottom. Let's check the route. You usually don't see Aaron Rodgers this far off target, so there's some chemistry that needs to, de to be developed very quickly between Jarrett Boykin and Aaron Rodgers. Packers only with three remaining wide receivers without James Jones. They dress four today, so Nelson, Cobb, and Boykin. Without Jones, who has gone to the locker room. This is Jacoby Jones. Tries to cut it to the outside, and a terrific tackle on special teams made by... An opportunity to, to buy afterwards, too, with the stuff the players wear. Absolutely. Check it out on NFL.com. Ravens, four possessions, four punts. More than half of their total yards came on one play. 31-yard completion to Jacoby Jones. Ravens have 58 yards of offense. Ray Rice back in. You saw Bernard Pierce during the last two possessions. And this is Rice, A.J. Hawk. In to make the tackle on Rice, who's been battling a hip injury, missed a game, came back last week. I mean, he just goes and finds a crease and comes. Watch him right here. You're going to see 50 just pop up. All the linemen up front, 
are blocking somebody. Nobody pays any attention to him. He comes right through the line of scrimmage, wraps up Ray Rice right in the backfield. That's a great job. Michael Orr pulled around the outside. As soon as he saw him leave on the pull, he shot right through that gap. Block on second down. And the pass could not be handled by Torrey Smith. Boy, we've had a couple of opportunities for guys to make plays this afternoon, and they're missing out on these plays. Leeson from the top right here pushes it up. It's that little corner route to the outside. Look how open he is. Just can't complete. Smith, the Ravens' leading receiver over the first five weeks. Now third down and 13. Ravens must get to the 43 for a first down. Black Elk flushed out to his right. Now he fires downfield for Smith, who makes an adjustment. But it is ruled that he was out of bounds. Amazing just that he caught that ball. Remember, he must get both feet down inbounds following possession. And he could not. The right foot comes down out of bounds. Man, I'll tell you what, those officials are letting these guys play in the backside, huh, Darrell? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very aggressive down the field in the passing game. So Sam Cook very busy in this first half, and the point is blocked! Packers block the punt, and it is Kuhn who could not scoop it up, and then James Ihedebo falls on it, so it will be Ravens football. Gonna come right through here. They overload the right side. And it's Ryan Taylor free to the punter. That the punt was blocked and did go beyond the line of scrimmage. Touched by the receiving team and then recovered by Baltimore. It is first down, Baltimore. Every special team coach, every meeting they ever say, if the ball is touched, crosses the line of scrimmage, stay away from it. That's not what Coons decides to do. As soon as he touches it, it's anybody's ball. Yeah, it, it ends up... The defensive blocking team has to hit it to make it a live ball. Again, you're exactly right, Tony. Just get away from it. The punting team would not be able to do it. It'd just be like downing a punt anywhere on the field as it crosses the line of scrimmage. Again, another opportunity to make a play. And not they make the play, but they give it right back to Baltimore. No, fair, fair. So a huge mistake... Made by John Kuhn of the Ravens. Now with a first down at their 41-yard line. Rice. Bottled up. Not a lot of room right up there in the middle of all those big guys. Unfortunately, I know that rule very well, Tony, because of a block punt on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> it happened to you one time. Yes, it, yes, it did. I, wa I watched uh, a field goal go in with no more time left on the clock to lose to the Miami Dolphins. And you have not been able to erase that from your memory. I have not. I have not. Now second and ten. Rice, five carries, no yards. Black on second down, looking for the fullback. Vontae Leach. Out of backfield. That's a big man right there. He gets the ball. Those the ABs do not want to see him running in a second. How do you want to get him tackled quick? Man. Almost looks like he has a wrong number on. He should have like a 90s. Looks like a D lineman, doesn't he? <laughs> but he pulls off those pink shoes, too. He's gone to the last three Pro Bowls. Started his career with the Green Bay Packers. Now third down and ten for the Ravens. Blanco steps up. Now he throws. And the catch is made for a first down and ball. Jumped out of bounds by Morgan Burnett. Biggest play of the day for the Ravens, 45 yards. Well, you get pressure on the outside, but no push in the middle. That allows Joe Flacco to step up, gets him a little bit more time to find Dallas Clark, number 87, follow him across on the little shallow crossing route. A little pick right there, and then he's off and running through the secondary. 
long, long. So the Ravens inside the red zone for the first time. Flacco moving to his right. And he'll slide down to the seven-yard line. Joe Flacco does a really nice job of feeling the pocket pressure, escaping with his feet to the outside. A smart job of sliding because Raji was right on his tail. He sensed him coming. Second down and four. Receiver set for the Ravens. Rice in the backfield. You're big. Second down. To the end zone. Too far for Smith. But there is a flag. It yeah, is a hold against the Packers. Yeah, they've been letting them play in the secondary, but Sam Shields just a little bit too much on this one. Defense, number 37. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Sam Shields on Torrey Smith. Uh, running a double move. It looks like he's going to cross formation, and then he tries to go vertical. Actually, in that situation, better than getting beat for the touchdown, just take the holding penalty. So it is now first and goal from the four-yard line for the Ravens. Wagner 71 in as an extra blocker for Baltimore. Here's Rice. Rice down to the two. Nice cut by Ray Rice on the goal line right here. He had nothing on the front side. All the big guys are to the right. Yeah, they had Rick Wagner out there, as Kenny yeah. said. So you're expecting run that way. This is a really nice little jump cut right here to try and get backside. Big Ryan Pickett closed everything down. Good job of squaring his shoulders and getting north-south right away after that cut, too. And his offensive line do a nice job of staying on the block and just try to wash him by. Wagner remains in, plus two tight ends and a fullback in Leach. Rice. Stop short. Nice lead block by Vontae Leach. Here he comes. He's coming right at you. Leading the way for Ray Rice. Great job there. Yeah, he needs just you, to stay right in his pocket, Ray Rice. Yeah, but you know what? Morgan Burnett forces that. He comes up in that run support right away, so all the movement that was created by Vontae Leach was taken away by Morgan Burnett in run support. Ravens keep the same 11 on the field. Two tight ends, the extra blocker in Wagner, the fullback in Leach. Third and goal. It is Rice again. Tries to turn the corner. There is a flag. As Rice has stopped short, two flags were thrown. Andy Malumba shaking up. Packer linebacker. We've talked about how thin they are right now at that position for the Green Bay Packers. He's just getting up off of a knee right now. Holding. Offense, number 71. Penalty has declined. Fourth down. The hold on Wagner, who is in as the extra blocker. He's going to be at the end of the line of scrimmage. I took Morgan Burnett, again, he does it on this play, too. Andy Malumba forces him outside, but watch 42, Morgan Burnett right there. Working against Vontae Leach. Ravens leave the offense on the field. They send in Pierce for Rice on fourth and goal. This is Pierce. And Bernard Pierce is stopped on fourth down. What a stand by the Green from the four. Three chances for Rice and then Pierce. They could not get into the end zone. So now it's the Packers who start from their own one, and the play is blown in. 
False start. False start. Offense number 70. Half the distance to the goal. First down. It's a great job by the defensive line of the Packers changing the line of scrimmage. Look at that push and the penetration into the backfield. Now let's go to the decision by Mike McCarthy. You've got the holding penalty. It's either going to be third and goal at the 11. I like the decision. Fourth and goal at the one, one and a half. Jim or John Harbaugh makes the aggressive decision to go for the touchdown instead of the field goal. Yeah, with that much surge from the defensive line, it makes it easier for the linebackers. You don't have to jump over anybody and go and secure a tackle like they did. There's Lacey. Gets out of the end zone. That penalty on the previous play, Gene Steratore mentioning half the distance, which is about an inch. <laughs> Five minutes remaining. Second quarter, Packers with a couple of big plays on their first possession, including the 37-yard run by Lacey, but averaging less than three yards per play since. Second and ten from the one-yard line. Rodgers from the end zone pass is intended for Boykin. They've been out of sync. He's got some pressure in his face right now. Yeah, you talked about it earlier, Dale. Just the timing between the receiver and, and Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers thinks he's going to be three yards shorter than what he is. Remember it. James Jones is out. Boykin, the antenna receiver, player who replaced James Jones. <laughs> Rodgers on third down. Fires and again looking for Boykin, but could not make the connection. This is not going to be an easy place to punt from, I'll tell you that, Darrell. Well, that's part of the decision by John Harbaugh. You, you know, you're going to have to go backed up if our defense can make a stand. But Aaron Rodgers trying to find somebody open. He's going to come up into the pocket and just sees that flash of green and gold. It's Jared Boykin again. And I tell you that the loss of James Jones right now is having an impact on this Packers passing game. Huge impact. Pass take. Deep in his own end zone. And now a timeout is signaled by First John Kuhn. Well, you've got a substitution because personnel aren't prepared to get onto the field in this, and you've got to burn a timeout. Second timeout taken by the Packers. Well, tonight, don't miss Fox Sports Live with Jay and Dan. They'll have complete highlights and analysis from... Game two of the American League Championship Series. Full day of NFL action, college football rankings, plus much, much more. I know I can't wait. What about you? Jay and Dan tonight. Uh, great addition. Great addition to the Fox family. They've come down from north of the border <laughs> and have been a great success. Some of that great white north humor. The mass day punting following the timeout. Goss... Calls for a fair catch at the 47. 51-yard punt. Tremendous field position for the Ravens. The rest of the afternoon, but an opportunity to make plays. Guys aren't taking advantage of it. Even first and goal at the four. Four shots for the Baltimore Ravens. They can't punch it in for the touchdown. This is Pierce. Best starting field position of the day for the Ravens. And Pierce takes it into Packers territory for a gain of five before he's tackled by Micah Hyde. Micah Hyde came across the whole formation. What a nice job of coming and making the tackle in the open field. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers leading 3-0 under four minutes remaining. Second quarter here in Baltimore. Second down at five. Flacco looking to throw. Intended for the fullback, Vontae Leach. They got him covered up pretty good, Vontae Leach, Darrell. They do. You know, he's going to run a little flat route. You know, you got to turn that up, turn that into that wheel route, the flat and go. Trying to get him into that secondary, big man. It was fun to meet with, too, man. You don't, you don't, 
What a great personality he has. We love talking to those fullbacks. <laughs> so, he, he loves the position, too, man. He loves it. Ravens have two fullbacks on their roster. Many teams this season yeah, not carrying yeah, yeah. the fullback. Sorry, Darrell. Flacco just one for his last six. On third down and five, being chased by Raji and Hawk. Flacco out of bounds back at the 49-yard line. There's that pursuit we talk about. I think that Joe Flacco is going to be able to get out. It's B.J. Raji from the inside, and then A.J. Hawk. Nick Perry, watch Nick Perry, number 53. He's one of the outside linebackers that time, coming from the inside, kind of gets that initial flush from the pocket. So Hawk credited with his second sack today. As Flacco loses a yard. Cook, who had his last punt blocked, end over end. And a fair catch is called for by Cobb at the 11. What's coming up, Kurt, on the Visa Halftime Report? Coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, we'll get you all caught up on all the early game action, including the Kansas City Chiefs trying to stay perfect this season, while the Steelers are looking for their first win of the year against the surprising Jets. That and more on the Visa Halftime. Where was Kirk coming from? That was the bathroom. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. He looked good, though. He looked good when he got out there, washed his hands and everything. Looking forward to hearing from Kurt and the gang at halftime. You know, it's nice standing down here right behind this, this huddle with Rodgers and watching him communicate. Down here, Dal, it's unbelievable. You, we talk about it in the break, but these guys are moving on this field. Big guys, too. For the Packers, their third straight drive, they start from inside their own 15. Again, Rodgers looking for Boykin. He's been the major target ever since Jones left the game with the injury and Boykin unable to make the catch. Well, by the play design, you're going to go to an area. You're going to go through your progression and throw to the area where that play is dictated to go. And right now, it seems like Jarrett Boykin is the guy, the way the Ravens are playing, that's going to have the most opportunity to make catches, but he's not doing anything. Rodgers over his last five. So now the Packers keep it on the ground with Lacey. He gains four, and there is a flag. It's a hold. Holding call on the Packers. Holding offense number 71. Half the distance to the goal. Replay second down. Left guard Josh sitting. Time for a game break with Joel Klatt. Joel. All right, thank you, Kenny. And we go to Houston, where the struggles for the Texans continue. Sam Bradford to Lance Kendricks, the two-yard TD catch, and the Rams are up 17-6. Kenny Moose Goose, what's up with the Texans? Wow, Texans struggling, Joel, and the Rams looking to even their record at 3-3. Three three. Goose with a bird's eye view. Second down and 16. Rodgers from the shotgun. Complete to Randall Cobb. And Cobb is upended down at the 13-yard line. Corey Graham the tackle. As we approach the two-minute warning. The only points coming on the Packers' opening possession of the game. Must get to the 22. But they do not get the snap away prior to the two minute warning. So Rodgers will hold over for a chat with Mike McCarthy. Packers by three. Quarter, third down and nine for the Green Bay Packers, who lead 3 0. Rodgers had the pass batted back. So the Packers, for the sixth time in this first half, will punt it away. Just not able to handle that pass rush of the Baltimore Ravens just with the down four. Tremendous push into the face of Aaron Rodgers right here. Pernell McPhee looping from the outside in. Gets that, look at that big hand coming up. Almost took it right off of Aaron Rodgers' hand. 
He does a nice job, McPhee, with keeping his eyes in the backfield on Rodgers. Rodgers just one for his last seven. Mastay punting from the two-yard line. Low line drive kick. And Doss will let it go. Elects not to field the punt, and it takes a Packers roll down to the 31-yard line. So the minute 42 remaining, Ravens offense back out. Ravens recovered their own block punt earlier. The block by the Packers. Ravens recovered after Kuhn touched it. Stopped on fourth and goal at the one-yard line after the decision by Mike McCarthy to decline the penalty. And we have seen punts throughout this first half. Maybe the most telling part about that, though, was the James Jones injury. It's really impacted the Packers passing game. Sure has. Flacco looking for the tight end, Clark. And for the Ravens guys, only 118 yards of offense. Ray Rice has been held to just three yards on the ground on eight carries. The, the, the run game, you, you thought it was going to take a stride from last week. Ran the ball effectively against the Dolphins in the second half. But That's total yards right there. Wow. This is this is a defensive battle here in the first half. 11 punts so far today as Flacco fires, and that's off the hands of Doss. It didn't look like it was going to be that in the beginning of this game. I'll tell you, with Eddie Lace's runs. Pressure off the left side here, Joe Flacco. We talked about it, Daryl, how he keeps his eyes downfield, always looking for a receiver. Now third down and ten, and the play is blown dead. Ball start. Ball start. Offense number 87. Five-yard penalty, third down. Dallas Clark. Uh, they, they have just faced some really, really difficult yardage amounts on third down here in the first half. And this is this is their eighth time at third and long. It, it's so difficult to com to convert at that time. It, defensively, you're, you're one-dimensional. We're going to bring the, the pass rush inside. We're going to drop our guys in coverage. So third and nine or worse, eight times for the Ravens. Inside handoff, Rice. Rice to the 36, but not enough. It is his longest run of the day, and a timeout is taken by the Packers, who will get the ball back with a minute 25 remaining. Well, let's show you a graphic here. It hasn't panned out this way in the first half, but compare Joe Flacco to Aaron Rodgers. Both have a Super Bowl MVP. See the contract totals, the two highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL today. But it's been a tough first half for both of these guys. The defense is really controlling the game. The Packers doing a great job executing their, their game plan. B.J. Raji told us, you know, our goal, keep them in that third and long. Make them one-dimensional. The, the, the distance is too long for them to run the football. You're going to try and run some draws like they did on that last play just to keep teams honest. But it's so difficult to convert third and long at this level. Both quarterbacks made their first NFL start in September of 2008. Flacco was a rookie. Rodgers sat behind Brett Favre for three years. Almost got that one blocked, too. He got blocked into him, though, for the contact. No flags. And it's Micah Hyde on the return all the way out to the 48-yard line. The Packers cut Jeremy Ross following their loss to the Bengals. He had his problems in the return game, and... It's Micah Hyde with the big return here after no flags were thrown as Malumba was locked in to Cook by the long snapper Morgan Cox. They definitely saw something when they were breaking down the punt protection team of the Ravens today. They're coming after it with punt blocks instead of setting up for returns. Packers have no timeouts. They've used all three. A minute 17 remaining first half as Rodgers fires to Jordy Nelson. Nelson inside the 20, out of bounds at the 18-yard line to Rodgers, who had been just one for his last seven, connects with Nelson for 33 yards. 
this is what we're used to seeing. The timing right there, perfect position with the location of the ball, and then the catch and run by Jordy Nelson. Nelson's second reception today. From the Ravens, 17. Rodgers looks right and then throws to his left. It's the fullback, Kuhn. He's tackled by the head of both time for a game break with Joel. All right, thank you, Kenny. And we go to Cleveland, another AFC North, NFC North battle. Greg Little, the two-yard TD catch from Brandon Whedon. And the Browns up 14-7. All right, thanks, Joel. Rodgers under pressure. There is a flag as Rodgers throws it away. These guys have been so good in the red zone during the Aaron Rodgers, Mike McCarthy era, and they have really, really struggled up until this point this season. Holding offense, number 69, 10-yard penalty, replay, second down. That's on the rookie left tackle, David Bakhtiari. And, and really, when you take a look at it, a lot of it is because of what the Packers are doing to themselves. They've had four sacks inside the red zone, three inside the 10-yard line. There is a holding penalty. Right there. I mean, you have got to be spot on when you get to the red zone. It's such an advantage to the defense because of the condensed area. And right now, this season, the Packers have been making too many mistakes by their offense once they've gotten to the red zone. Second down and 19. Rodgers, a pump fake. Now he throws, and it's nearly picked off by Daryl Smith. And that was right in Daryl Smith's hands. He's got to make this play. Uh, he plays it perfectly. Matched up against your Michael Finley right here. A little push separation and then just breaks on the ball. Does everything right except catch it right through his hands. That defensive line did a good job of getting up, getting their hands up right in front of Aaron Rodgers. Had to pull it down. He's having a hard time seeing over those big guys up front. Third down and 19. Rodgers on third down. He throws. It's Cobb. And now Cobb is shaken up after the Packers lost James Jones earlier. Randall Cobb is down. And now a flag has been thrown. Let's see the contact by Corey Graham at the end. It's a little stutter go. No, it's not going to be Corey Graham coming from the safety position. Matt Elam comes in, puts his helmet right on the knee. Twenty-two seconds remaining. The Packers out of timeout, so we could be looking at a 10-second runoff as the Packers medical staff continues to tend to wide receiver Randall Cobb. Remember, there was a flag thrown at the end of the play, so you'll hear from Gene Steratore. The ruling on the field is that we did have a completed pass. During that, the receiver was injured. An injury inside of one minute carries an automatic timeout to the team of the injury. Green Bay is out of timeouts, which would be their fourth timeout. By rule, that would carry a 10-second runoff as well. But due to the fact that we have a personal foul on necessary roughness at, after the play, on the offense, number 77, the 10-second runoff will not occur. There will be a 15-yard penalty against Green Bay, penalized from the end of the run. It will be first and 10 Green Bay. With the game clock operator, please put 25 seconds on the game clock. 25 seconds on the game clock, please. Thank you. Now, there is no 77 on the Green Bay Packers, so let's think about Don Barkley, 67. There's Aaron Rodgers coming in first. Yeah, there's T.J. Lang, number 70. Yep, he shoves Matt Elam, who made the hit on Randall Cobb, so it is 70 Lang. And you heard the explanation from Gene Steratore. It is a completion and then the 15-yard penalty. No runoff due to the personal foul that was assessed to the Packers. 
The one mistake that he didn't make it is fourth down, not first down, Kenny. He just corrected himself. So the line of scrimmage is now the 26-yard line. So the Packers send out Mason Crosby for a 44-yard attempt. He hit from 45 earlier. But the biggest concern right now to the Packers is the health of Randall Cobb. They have already lost James Jones, so if Cobb does not return, Green Bay will have only two healthy wide receivers for the second half. From the right hash, Mastay places it down. Crosby from 44. It is no good. Wide to the right. It was perfect this season. That hit 14 in a row, dating back to last season. So to add insult to injury, the Cobb injury, and now the missed field goal. Well, missed opportunities this entire first half by the Green Bay Packers. And right now, the, the biggest concern, as you pointed out, Kenny, is, is the health of Randall Cobb. And he's going to be going into the locker room on a cart. Randall Cobb, who led the Packers in receptions a season ago, first player in NFL history to gain 900 receiving yards and 900 kick return yards. And now the Ravens take over with 20 seconds remaining in the half, and they have all three of their timeouts. Flacco can't find anyone, and then he fires out of bounds. Coming up at halftime, the Visa Halftime Report with Kurt and the gang from Los Angeles. Chiefs looking to stay perfect. Steelers looking for their first win. It's all coming up during the Visa Halftime Report with Kurt, Michael, Terry, Howie, and Jimmy. Flacco in trouble. He's hit. Ball comes loose on the sack by Nick Perry. This is Dayton Jones. And he takes it down inside the 10. There is one second on the clock. Now, we'll see if they put that time back on. They should. Yeah, I think they will. There was actually might have been With two. The game clock operator, please put two seconds yeah. on the game clock. Two seconds on the game clock, please. That was my big concern. When they make the play, and he scoops up the ball, and he starts to run, he's not going to be aware of the clock. He, he, nobody's going to be able to think in that situation on the defensive side of the ball. An offensive player possibly... But to expect Mike Neal or Dayton Jones to be able to realize that this is more about time than anything else, I've got to give my kicker another opportunity to get a field goal. And Nick Perry on that play got hurt. They had to carry him off to the Green Bay sideline. So Perry with the sack, the force fumble. Great job by the referee, Gene Steratore. As they put two seconds back on the clock, and here is Crosby from 31, just moments after he was wide right from 44. So the sack turnover leads to three points for the Packers. There's Perry, as Goose mentioned, hobbled off. 12 seconds left in the first half, not to just run that clock. Three sacks for each team, 13 punts. Low scoring first half, Packers scored on their first possession, Darrell, and on their last. Yeah, well, I think at the end of the half right there, there's an opportunity, you know, to just get in at halftime down three to nothing, and they decide to be a little bit more aggressive, you know, similar to when they went for it on fourth down, down by the goal line. You heard Jimmy Johnson talk about how precious points are. They missed going 3-3 three, three at that stage by, by electing to go for it on fourth down. Well, now you're 6 nothing because at 12 seconds, I think at that point, you take the knee. You tried it on the first play. It didn't happen out. Follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash... NFL. Ravens deferred at the start of the game, so they get the ball first here in the second half. Jacoby Jones on the return, and he's tackled shy of the 20-yard line. Had an opportunity to talk to both coaches, Darrell, during halftime. John Harbaugh told his team, listen, forget about the first half. Let's go and find a way to win here in the second half. And Mike McCarthy only has two receivers. He said, hey, listen, we got to go and find a way to win here in the second half, too. Both coaches talking about the same stuff. With only two receivers, somebody needs to step up and make a big play. So uh, let's see what uh, they do on offense here, the Packers, with only two receivers. And it's the Ravens 
as we look over the right shoulder of Goose, who start from their 16-yard line. Worst starting field position of the day for Baltimore as Bernard Pierce gets forced back by Jamari Lattimore. There's and a clean from Brad Jones right there. This is a clinic, and we love to see great form tackling. Watch, shuffle, shuffle, fight off the block, and again, take away the legs of the ball carrier. Well done, Jamari Lattimore. And yeah, that Green Bay's defense has just done a phenomenal job up to now. Lattimore, we mentioned earlier, making his first NFL start in the absence of Matthews and Jones. Pass is caught by Dallas Clark up at the 19-yard line for a gain of six. I have been so impressed with Morgan Burnett over the last couple of weeks. He missed the first three games for the Packers because of an injury. And last week, you could see what it meant to have him back against the Detroit Lions. He's made some nice plays, some big plays at the goal line in that series uh, earlier in the half. Burnett leading the Packers with six tackles in the first half. Third down and seven for the Ravens, who have only four first downs in the game. And there is sack number four. And Flacco like the ball's out the football. Too. Micah Hyde, along with A.J. Hawk, who had two sacks in the first half. Ravens recover, but will punt. Micah Hyde coming off the edge. Packers dialing up a lot of pressure. He is free all the way to Joe Flacco. They overload the right side with four guys, only three guys that can block them. Joe Flacco's got to identify that and get rid of the ball or start moving to his left away from that pressure. First career sack for Hyde, the rookie out of Iowa, fifth round pick. And now Cook back to punt Darrell for the eighth time. And over end kick. And this is Hyde who just had the big sack. Hyde on the return. And he brings it all the way back inside the Ravens 35-yard line, a 20-yard return by Hyde. So let's go back and revisit that sequence. At the end of the first half, the Packers drive down. They miss the field goal, so it's 3-0. Well, you come out on your first play. Okay, let's try and be a little bit aggressive. You're scrambling, looking. Oh, it's, it ends up just being a throwaway. Okay, there's 12 seconds left. You have struggled mightily all afternoon offensively. This is where I think Baltimore just kills the clock, goes in at halftime, 3-0. They elect to stay aggressive. It costs them a turnover. Now it's 6-0. There were two seconds placed back on the clock following that sack and forced fumble. Late field goal by Crosby, 6-0 Packers. And now Green Bay from the Baltimore 34-yard line. Off the fake to Lacey. Pass is caught by Jermichael Finley. First catch today for the Packers' tight end. That's one of the guys when, when Tony's trying to figure out, okay, who's going to step up? We're down to two wide receivers. Jermichael Finley is going to have to step up and play. Andrew Corliss, Ryan Taylor, Brandon Bostic. You've got four tight ends that are up and active this afternoon. Your offensive game plan shrinks tremendously in that situation, but these guys have to step up in those different personnel groups that they can utilize. Wallace in the game. So two tight ends. That's Wallace shifting. Number 81 shifts into the backfield. The handoff to Lacey on second down, and it's Terrell Suggs who pulls it down from behind. Got to stay on your feet. Stay on your feet and go through the block, Andrew Corliss. You, you can't throw at the Suggs or at the feet of Terrell Suggs. He's too athletic. He's a big, powerful guy, but he's also athletic. He's going to play off that, and he's going to go down and make the tackle. Sometimes it's a lot easier said than done, right, Darrell? <laughs> no, but you can't throw, yeah, Tony. Just give it your best shot, you know? You, you're maybe not used to blocking from the backfield, but go get in his face. Yeah. Packers in field goal range. Third down and four. Must get to the 24 for a first down. That's Rodgers. Fires to the end zone. It is picked off by Jimmy Smith. The pass was intended for Jordy Nelson. And Smith comes up with his third career interception. Packers go for the big play. They turn it over. By Jimmy Smith. They start from their own 20 with Ray Rice in the backfield. And this is Rice, who has had his problems today. That's his 10th carry. Only...
13 yards on the ground for Rice. Well, this is an offense that, in my opinion, is still trying to find out their identity. Offensive coordinator Jim Caldwell right there. He's not even really through a full season of calling plays. Took over late last season in the month of December. Got on that nice roll through the playoffs on the way to a Super Bowl championship. But again, that's not a full season yet. This is an evolving offense yet, and they're just struggling to find out who they're going to be. Replace Cam Cameron last December. Offense number 73, five-yard penalty, second down. Second time, Yonda has been flagged today. Well, you know what? Down here on the field, Daryl, I'm about 20 yards behind that offensive line right now, that whole offense. And it just seems to me that they just don't have a sense of urgency. That I've seen that same play with Ray Rice up the middle three or four times in the game. It hasn't been successful. It's not like they're going and changing anything up. I understand what you said about their identity. But they need to go and play a little bit more with a sense of urgency down here. Something that I'm not seeing at all. Wow. More fouls. Another false start. False start. Offense. Number 72. Five-yard penalty. Second down. So they're just Thomas. beating themselves yep. in this situation. The left guard, Kalechi Osemele. Back-to-back false starts. Last four Ravens possessions. Ravens have more penalties today than first downs. Five penalties, four first downs in the game for Baltimore. Now on second down, it's Rice. Rice out to the 20-yard line. Jamari Lattimore made the tackle. One of the things, every time you talk to a quarterback or anybody on the offense, what they talk about is getting into a rhythm. And, and the, the best way to get into the rhythm is getting that first first down. So you can start to control the tempo of the game. You saw their last few possessions. There's no opportunity for this offense to establish any type of rhythm under those circumstances. You had a look at Torrey Smith, who has not had a reception today. Third down and 15. Rocco with time. Pass is caught by Doss, makes a nice move, but then it's M.D. Jennings who wraps him up. And now the Ravens will set out the punting unit for the ninth time today. They're down in distance on third down has, has just been awful today. I mean, you, you can't expect to have success when you put yourself in those positions by your performance on first and second down. Eight three and outs during the course of the game today. There is absolutely no way to establish any type of offensive rhythm. Micah Hyde back deep. Had a big return earlier in this half. What a kick. Hyde forced all the way back to the 12. The return out to the 30-yard line. A 61-yard punt by Cook. Nothing Packers. Green Bay without two wide receivers. Both ruled out. James Jones and Randall Cobb. Down to two wideouts. Nelson and Boykin. This is Eddie Lacy on first down. Lacy gains a couple. Time for another game break. Take it away, Kurt Benefee. And time for another Nick Foles touchdown. This is second touchdown pass of the day. Beautiful one to Riley Cooper. 47 yards on the score. And they lead it 21-17 in the third quarter at Tampa. Kenny Moose and Goose. All right, thanks, Kurt. Here in Baltimore, 6 nothing lead for the Packers. Second down and eight. There's James Jones. Rodgers, quick release on second down. It's Boykin. And Boykin picks up a first down and more. He had his problems in the first half. But this time, Jared Boykin. Takes it all the way down to the Ravens' 25-yard line. A 42-yard catch and run. Well, we found his niche. Don't have him go downfield. Just throw it to him and get it. And let him run an open field. There it is. <laughs> they had to figure that out at halftime, I think. Wow. That's some good thing. open field running. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Some really bad open field tackling by the Ravens. One, two. Look at this. Three. I mean, you got to wrap it up. You can't go and, and tackle his shoulder pads. You've got to tackle his legs. That's Boykin's first catch this season. He had five last year as a rookie. Play clock at three. From the Ravens, 25. The handoff to Lacey. Lacey turns the corner. And that is tackled at the 
the 20-yard line, there is a flag. Matt Elam made the stop. Holding offense, number 88, 10-yard penalty, replay, first down. The tight end, Jermichael Finley. Yeah, I, I, I would love to see a replay of this one because I thought he did a heck of a job against Terrell Suggs here. He's out here far left. Yeah, you know, there he is, 88 versus 55. He's got his, his left arm, is outside. It's on the outside of Terrell Suggs' arm, but I did not see a hold on that play. Let's listen to the hit on Lacey. First down at 20, following the penalty from the Ravens' 35. Rodgers moving to his right, directing traffic, throws downfield for Nelson to the end zone. No flags, Webb on the coverage for the Ravens. Webb does a nice job identifying when that ball is thrown down, and turns around and breaks it up. Well, this is when Aaron Rodgers is at his most dangerous. The play breaks down, they extend it, they get outside. He's got his one-on-one -on -one down the field that he looks for. Webb has his head turned around. Goes up the highest point and breaks it up. That's all he can ask out of it. For him. Second down and 20. Three Three Lacey. Lacey down to the 32 yard line, gain of three. See if they can get into this up-tempo style that, that Aaron Rodgers talked about. They wanted to try and get the defensive line of the Baltimore Ravens, not only, you know, during the course of the play, but the substitution at a quicker pace to tire them out. We're seeing them getting back into the huddle now. Get into that run game. Let's see if we can execute that plan and get those guys up front tired. Packers must get to the 15, and Rodgers forced to use a timeout with the play clock running down. So third down and 17 for Green Bay when we return. For the Packers. They must get to the 15-yard line for a first down. Rodgers rolling right. He throws, and the pass is too far for Finley. Now, one of the big things that this injury is going to cause to the Green Bay Packers is teams play them defensively a certain way. You're going to get a lot of two deep safeties. You're going to be underneath coverage because of the receivers. Now, with James Jones and Randall Cobb out, you're seeing a much more varied approach to how they're going to try and attack this Green Bay offense. It's going to be tough for them through the rest of this game. So this will be a 50-yard attempt. Crosby is two for three today. His season long is 52 from the left hash. Crosby from 50 yards out. His kick is good. So Crosby hits for the third time today, extending the Packers' lead to nine. It's a ball in his hands, and he's down the field. Some good open field running on that play. Just continue to build off the positives. 9-0 Green Bay. Jacoby Jones back deep for the Ravens. From the goal line. Jones across the 30, and he's forced out of bounds up at the 35-yard line. Nice return, just under six minutes remaining third quarter. A look at the two quarterbacks, two of the last three Super Bowl MVPs. Right, and let's take a look at each of them. Aaron Rodgers, known for his completion percentage, great accuracy. Joe Flacco, his big plays down the field. Can't have too many with 129 yards passing, and look at the... The, per the completion percentage for Aaron Rodgers. So a tough day at the office for both of these quarterbacks. And for this Ravens offense, Darrell, as Rodgers watches from the sideline, only four first downs. They've committed four false starts. Have been shut out to this point. And there's the fifth first down and more as Marlon Brown looks to outrun Andy Jennings. Jennings finally brings him down. And the Ravens' offense all of a sudden has some life. A 60-yard pass play. Well, just talked about the big play. Marlon Brown does it. It's a short pass, 14, coming from the back spot right there. Finds the soft spot. But watch the run after the catch. 
Now, Marlon Brown is the big physical guy with the good hands, but he's showing he's got some breakaway speed on that one. Rookie out of Georgia, officially 59 yards, longest reception of the season for Brown. Ravens have too many men on the field. Dallas Clark hustling off. First and goal from the six. Blanco looking end zone. He throws. Incomplete. Doss could not come down with two feet after possession. This is a nice little route combination on the outside. Inside out with Torrey Smith. He goes to the outside. Possession. Nope. Pandon Doss. Good call by the official. Great job by Gene Sterrett to Torres Crew all day long. All day, I tell you, the end of the first Excellent. half, the way they sorted all that out, very impressive. Great communication to the people here in the stadium and at home. Second and goal, the slant. This is Brown, and a nice tackle made by Micah Hyde. Gain of just one. We've talked about the big guys up front and the linebackers. Micah Hyde is having a nice game this afternoon. Not just defensively, but some good stuff on special teams as well. Now, remember, the Ravens could not score in the first half. They had first and goal at the four. Now, deep in Green Bay territory once again, it is third and goal from the five-yard line. Flacco can't find anyone. Stays on his feet. Now he throws. And that one is broken up by Lattimore. He was looking for Brown, and the Ravens will send out the field goal unit. I tell you, we have seen some great defense played this afternoon on, on both sides for both teams. These situations, to have the play break down and the quarterback to be able to extend it this long and still not be able to find anybody open. That's great by the Green Bay secondary. We've seen Baltimore secondary do the same thing with Aaron Rodgers out moving around the pocket. And as you mentioned, it's some of the youngsters hide a rookie. Lattimore making his first start. So here's Justin Tucker now to attempt a 23-yard field goal. And the Ravens are on the board, but blocked on the offense, held to just three after the big pass play. It's a six-point Packer lead. Every game this season, Torrey Smith, nothing today. Mm. That's surprising, too, because after the catch, that guy is dangerous. Packers will start from their own 20 with a six-point lead. Well, Fox, tomorrow it's everyone's new favorite drama, Sleepy Hollow, as critics raving. It's unlike anything else on television. When a mysterious child is found from another era, does he carry a deadly secret? See why everyone is hopelessly hooked on Sleepy Hollow. It's all new tomorrow night at 9, 8 Central, right here on Fox. Packers back on offense. In case you joined us late, they have lost two wide receivers in this game. James Jones and Randall Cobb out with injuries. Eddie Lacy in the backfield, three wide receiver set, including the tight end Finley. And this is Lacy. Lacy out to the 25, a gain of five. We check in with Kurt. When Matt Schaub left the game with an injured ankle, some Houston fans cheered. TJ Yates says uh, you may not want to cheer so quickly. A pick six thrown on his first possession. Alec Ogletree of the Rams takes it 98 yards. He just threw another one. Two possessions, two picks, 38-6. Rams in control. Kenny Moose and Goose. Wow, a shocker in Houston. Thanks, Kurt. Wouldn't be Houston without a pick six, right? Right. Five consecutive games. Unbelievable. Second and five, Lacey, Pharrell Suggs, first Raven, make contact with Lacey, who loses a yard on the play. James Jones in the middle, a look at what the available wideouts have done. Brody Nelson and Jared Boykin in the absence of Jones and Cobb. We're down at six.
Rodgers just one for ten on third down today as Rodgers is chased by Suggs and he takes off, picks up a first down. He slides out to the 36-yard line. This is impressive because Eddie Lacy completely misses on the blitz and there's going to be a linebacker right in Aaron Rodgers' face. I don't know how he got out of that one. It was purple everywhere. Number 12 gains 12 and that quiets the crowd and Rodgers spoke to us yesterday about taking this crowd out of the game. Baltimore tremendous at home. 26 and 3 over their last 29. They've won 13 straight at home against NFC opponents. But the Packers continue their drive from the 36. Off the fake to Lacey. Rodgers fires downfield for Nelson. And Jordy Nelson takes it in for a Packers touchdown as he beat Webb. 64 yards from Rodgers to Nelson. Uh, you've only got a couple of guys to worry about on the field now due to injury. Jordy Nelson's got to be at the top of your list. You can't let him get behind you to the middle of the field, straightens it up. I, I don't know what happened. Lardarius Webb must have obviously thought he had safety help in the middle of the field, and there was none there. They all got, they all bid on that little play action. They thought that the run was going to happen, and it didn't, and the safeties all got caught up. Sixty four yards longest reception of the season by Nelson Crosby the extra point Packers lead 16 three well, It's a little bit of a play action and then you're gonna boot out to the back side But you have to as a defense you have to know what's gonna hurt you the most Ryan Taylor escorts out so they've got an escort out there and it, I, I think it's got to be a breakdown in coverage, Tony. I just, I don't see Lardarius Webb getting into the point where he allows Jordy Nelson just to run by him. Yeah, Webb got caught looking in the backfield a little bit and wasn't backpedaling, staying over the top. And both of the safeties also. I mean, you know, that whole secondary where it was the question mark in my mind of how are these guys going to go and react against a guy like Aaron Rodgers. And uh, right now, Aaron Rodgers is taking it to him. Johnny Jolly over to celebrate with Jordy Nelson. It's very jolly. I mean, it, it, the one thing you, you can't allow is with everything that's happened to them from a person and personnel standpoint regarding the injuries, the explosive play over the top is the one that you can't allow. You know, make them go the long, hard road, short passes, running Eddie Lacy. But to let Jordy Nelson get behind you, big mistake by the Ravens defense who's played well all game. So there have been 13 points scored in the last four minutes following a 6-0 first half. The Ravens will start from their own 20-yard line. Well, the last time the Green Bay Packers won a game in the city of Baltimore, we take you back to 1974 against the Colts at Memorial Stadium. A couple of rushing touchdowns for MacArthur Lane. Packers over the Colts, 20 to 13. Last time the Green Bay Packers won a game in Baltimore. Well, how much has the game changed since that? How much the fields? I played in old Memorial <laughs> the Stadium. Yeah. The old baseball field running on dirt, right? <laughs> the good old days, Daryl. Yeah, as Goose alluded to, Ravens played at Memorial Stadium when they entered the league following the move from Cleveland in 96. So the Ravens trailing by 13. First catch today for Torrey Smith, the Ravens' leading receiver. It's going to be part of that game plan by the Green Bay Packers. Let's limit Torrey Smith and what he can do. He's off to a great start this season. Let's get him into third and longs as much as possible. Yeah. On first down, this is Pierce. Bernard Pierce takes it across the 40 to the 42-yard line. 
I like that play. I, I like to see more of that. You know, I, all these teams in the NFL have kind of fallen in love with this zone scheme. I'm not a big fan of the zone scheme. On that one, you've got guys pulling, getting out onto the perimeter, some big athletic bodies to clear the way for your running back. That's that position block, that zone block, zone play that you're talking about. That's offensive line. So Let's first move it lateral. First down, Skews on back to back plays for the Ravens. Pierce remains in for Rice. It is the end around to Marlon Brown. He broke through the first tackle attempt from Mike Neal, and then it's Micah Hyde, so a loss of two on the play for Brown. Mike Neal does everything but finish the play. He sees it going away, recognizes the end around coming, gets upfield with good contain, but just can't make the tackle. Now remember, he's a, he's a defensive lineman converted to a stand-up outside linebacker. Had a great game last week against the Lions. Now second down and 12. Pierce in the backfield, shifting to his right. Three wide receivers. This is Pierce. There is a flag. Movement prior to the snap. Offside. Defense, number 96. Five-yard penalty. Replay. Second down. Well, Neil heard us talking about him and the great job he did against Detroit last Sunday. Trying to get in there a little bit too quick. A bit too excited. Fourth season out of Purdue, so the Ravens now facing a second and seven with a half minute remaining in this third quarter. On second down, it's Pierce. Cuts to his right. Staying right with him is Morgan Burnett. So no gain for Bernard Pierce. Ravens facing a third down and seven as this third quarter comes to an end. Rodgers hits Nelson for the first touchdown of this game. It's 16-3. Green the intended receiver. Holding. Oh, defense. Number 38. Five-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. From Odd Williams. Number 38. Coming from the back. Little double move again. We've seen a couple of double moves. Packer players making a good decision, though, at that time. Had one down in the red zone where they were going to give up a touchdown, had the holding penalty. Same thing there. Going over the top for a big play. Rice in the backfield from midfield. This is Rice. And he found a hole. Picks up a Ravens first down. He had only 18 yards on 11 carries prior to that run, and Rice gains 11. Oh, that's a decisive run for Ray Rice. Right type style of run with that zone scheme. As soon as you plant, get north and south. Longest run of the day for Rice. New set of downs for the Ravens. Block on first down. Lets it off to Brown. Breaks away from A.J. Hawk. It's another Ravens first down. Marlon Brown gains 12. Check in on the Lions and Browns with Kurt. Yeah, once down 17-7, Detroit's come back to take the lead. Matthew Stafford to Joseph Fourier, his second score of the game, and they lead it now in Cleveland, 21-17. Can you lose some goose? Well, the Lions looking for their fourth win. Chicago 4-2 and two in the NFC North. Lions at 3-2, and two, and these Packers, who have already had their bye, are 2-2. Two and two. Here's Rice on first down up the middle. Ray Rice to the 21-yard line. Good old eye formation right there, Dow. I think Ray Rice, when he's a downhill runner like that, when you just give him the ball and you tell him where he's going to go instead of him dancing in the backfield, he is a completely different runner. That's when he's most effective. He needs to go and make a decision and stick with it and run downhill. We mentioned earlier, he's got 17 yards on his last two carries after the slow start. Second down and four. Blackhouse pass is caught by the tight end, Dallas Clark. And he picks up another Ravens first down to Baltimore, moving the ball on his drive. 
It'll be first and goal from the Packers 10. Oh, this is a good job by uh, uh, Joe Flacco recognizing the matchup. It's Dallas Clark versus Mike Neal. Now, Mike Neal is a great pass rusher. He's a big guy converted from defensive line to outside linebacker, but he's going to take some time to learn the coverage skills. From the Green Bay 10, Rice in the backfield. Flacco hands it off to Rice, and this time, nothing. It's Mike Daniels along with A.J. Hawk on the tackle for the Packers. Some big bodies down there in that defensive line. Yeah, we talk about the linebackers and the secondary that, you know, so a lot of times there's just two, two defensive linemen in there for the Packers, and yet they're able to clog up a lot of space. That whole defense is just running to the ball. They're doing a great job of pursuit. Flacco out of the shotgun on second and goal. Flacco to the end zone. The catch is made by Jacoby Jones for a Ravens touchdown. Nice touch on the throw by Joe Flacco here. Jacoby Jones all the way on the outside working against Sam Shields. Just right over the top. Sam Shields get, gets caught with his eyes in the backfield. Jacoby Jones just runs right past him. His first touchdown reception of the season. Played in only one prior game. Missed the last four. Tucker, the extra point. Ravens have pulled to it in six. Flacco perfect. Four for four on the drive. Finds Jones. Plays 80 yards. You can't let it get to this point before you develop a sense of urgency. Yeah, on both, both sides. Kickoff is taken out. This is Michael Hill. Who is signed from the Packers practice squad two weeks ago. Jacoby Jones celebrates. They would have told us he'll be out for the remainder of this game. They lost James Jones as well. From the 16-yard line, it's Lacey. And he is wrapped up by the combination of Arthur Jones and number 98. No, it's not Tony Saragusa <laughs> in a Ravens uniform. It's Brandon Williams with Goose's former number. Goose, you got to work with the equipment guy so he doesn't give your number out. Yeah, it's all right. that's all right, man. He's doing a good job in there playing. <laughs> I was a little skinnier than he is, though. He's filling that shirt out pretty well. Yes, he is. <laughs> Rookie out of Missouri Southern State. Second down at nine. Rodgers on second down. Under pressure, and he finds the fullback, John Kuhn. And Kuhn is tackled by Webb, who remains down. Lardarius Webb, as Kuhn looked to hurdle over the left corner. And now Webb finally on his way up. You saw John Kuhn released from the backfield off to the right side there. I tell you what, that is when I got hurt playing this game, the two times that I got Concussions were knees to the side of the head, and you saw Lardarius Webb slow getting up. But Webb remains on the field. Now the play clock winding down, and Rodgers will take a timeout. Just over 10 minutes remaining, fourth quarter, as Rodgers heads over for a chat with Mike McCarthy. This is one of the areas I'm surprised to see the Packers struggle with this afternoon. Really, the... the play clock I mean, they've had to burn timeouts uh, they're snapping the ball sometimes right as it's going to zero I'm just keeping an eye right now on Ladarius Webb he's still out on the field I mean the trainers came up to him there I think he's got a little bit of a a ding now watch, watch the left knee of Kuhn yeah to the right side of the helmet you know it's, it's one of the things Tony you know, we talk about you know this year the the NFL it's mandatory to have thighs and knee pads on. You can see them on all the players. 
that's one of the reasons why not so much the protection of the knee of the player but also the people on the field when you get that knee to the head that extra padding on the knee is going to help a little bit in that situation absorb some of that impact and remember there is an independent observer upstairs keeping an eye on the field and if he thinks that a player needs to come out following an injury he will call down to the sidelines but Webb remains in. It is third down and one. Play clock winding down. Packers get the snap away. And Rodgers' pass is caught for a first down by Nelson. Shoved out of bounds by Webb. But Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson once again combined to quiet this Baltimore crowd yeah, and really for the first time it's the play that that everybody we talked to from the Baltimore Ravens was concerned about defensively going against Green Bay they say that Aaron Rodgers and Jordy Nelson the best combination in the NFL with that back shoulder throw and Nelson also one of the best at getting both feet down in bounds along the sideline new set of downs for the Packers Lacey finds a hole. He is out to midfield and into Ravens territory. And he Lacey gains 17. Uh, what a great play call into this blitz. And when you blitz, you're vacating an area. They're going right to where this, this blitz is coming from. And all you got to do is get some seals. You get everybody on the same level. And Eddie Lacey, he was eight yards downfield immediately. Look at that. There is nobody there because of the blitz. Four yards on the ground. Lacey fell just short of 100 last week against the Lions. Lacey up the middle. Remember, the Packers had gone 44 games without a 100-yard rusher. And then Starks, week two against Washington, did it. Franklin, next week against Cincinnati. And Lacey a yard shy against the Lions. They've had two the last three, and now Lacey three yards away. Uh, he's had some big runs this afternoon. Last week against Detroit, it, there was nothing that really stood out in your memory, but he continues to fall forward. He very rarely has negative runs or gets pushed back. Second down and seven. Packers lead by six. Rodgers fakes the handoff to Lacey, steps up, takes off, slips. And is shy of a first down, about a yard and a half from the marker. Looks like the officials are going to mark it right where he first hit the ground, almost like he slid. He was complaining, Aaron Rodgers, that he dove forward and no one touched him, that he got that the ball should be past the first down marker, but that's not where they're going to put it. Now, if you go. Feet first, it's where your first touch. And that's exactly where they marked it, Kenny. So it is now third down and two. The play clock is down to three. Here's Lacey on third down, and with a good second effort, he picks up a Packers first down. You got to be careful leaving your feet. A big physical runner, you lose all your power with the hob. See, he leaves his feet there. Very fortunate to come down and still be able to push forward. And Lacey hits 100 yards on the ground with that run. So the Packers have done it three of the last four games after they went 44 games without a back running for 100 yards. Under seven minutes remaining. New set of downs for Green Bay as Rodgers looked left, now looks right. Now moving to his left. Being chased, he throws, and the capture's made by Finley for another Packers first down from Michael Finley inside the Ravens' 20, a 19-yard pass play. Again, we've seen it so many times today by both secondaries. Very, very good in their coverage, especially when the play breaks down. There's to Aaron Rodgers' right. Now let's go check the left side of the field. Good work by Jermichael Finley. Back and forth. There's 88 working against Terrell Suggs. We know Terrell Suggs is a very, very difficult 
rusher when he's after the quarterback. They found a good matchup down the field against an athletic Jermichael Finley. You got to give a little credit to that offensive line, too. The Ravens brought the blitz, and they picked it up and gave Aaron Rodgers plenty of time to look downfield. Rodgers, four for four on this drive. From the 19-yard line, it's Lacey. And Lacey takes it down inside the 15. Jimmy Smith made the tackle, gain of five as the clock continues to run. Ralph Suggs heading off the field. Velody Nada as well to the sidelines. As the Ravens shuffle in personnel. This will be the 10th play of the drive for the Packers. Second down at five, it's Lacey. Hard to bring him down. Lacey to the Baltimore 12. So third down and three coming up for the Packers, who lead by six with under five minutes remaining. We welcome those of you who have been watching the Rams and the Texans. Kenny Albert, Daryl Johnston, Tony Siragusa in Baltimore. Packers lead the Ravens 16-10. Four and a half to play. It is now third down and three for Green Bay. And Rodgers uses the Packers' second timeout. It's amazing that this Green Bay Packers team is doing so well with only two receivers. Due to injuries without Jones and Cobb. Infield goal range for the six-point lead. Rodgers moving to his right. Pump fake. Now he throws. Nelson unable to make the catch, so the Packers will send out the field goal unit. Looks to extend the lead to nine. I like the concept of moving the pocket, but look at the Baltimore Ravens defense. They sense that they get all the way out, the coverage down the field. An opportunity working against Corey Graham, but sails a little bit. Green Bay, I mean, we've seen them make so many acrobatic catches during the course of the season. Today's been a tough day for their wideouts. More drops today than we've, I've seen them in quite some time during the course of the game. 31-yard attempt from the left hash. Crosby has hit three of four today. Make it four of five. It is back to a two-possession game. Packers by nine. Five took a knee to the side of the head. They brought him all the way inside into the locker room. They're going to do a little checkup. But remember, he did stay on the field after suffering the initial hit. Now heads in, and Kobe Jones takes it out from deep in the end zone. He's got a couple of 108-yard returns to his credit, including one in the Super Bowl. 6-0, Packers led at the half. Aaron Rodgers hitting Jordy Nelson, 64-yard touchdown. And then it was Joe Flacco to Jacoby Jones pulling the Ravens to within six. It's now a nine-point game. There have been points scored, either a touchdown or a field goal now, on the last five possessions in this game. John Harbaugh's Ravens trailing by nine. He has never lost to an NFC team at home. Perfect 10 and 0. Catch is made by Doss out of the 29 yard line for Ravens first down. So Flacco heating up now, five for his last five. Ravens need two scores. And that pass is off the hands of Ray Rice. It's just, it's so impressive to watch Joe Flacco in the pocket remains so calm and he's able to find that his his sense is not really sensing the pressure but sensing where that softest spot in the pocket is where he's going to have the most time to hang in there and find his receivers downfield second down at 10. Blanco under pressure A.J. Hawk with his third sack today and we've seen a couple times during the course of this game where the Packers have had multiple guys right to Joe Flacco Got Ray Rice in a situation where they had two linebackers coming. He could only take one. Very patient, those linebackers on that delay blitz. Oh, oh. Black on third and 17, throws. It's complete. 
and Doss out at the 33-yard line. There is a flag. And that's really been one of the stories today. You mentioned the third and 17. Baltimore has been in third and long all afternoon. Holding offense number 66. 10 yard penalty. Replay. Third down. It's on the center. Gino Gratkowski. Keep your eye on the center. Working against Mike Daniels. Yeah, once Mike Daniels gets by him, you got to release that arm or else he's holding. Yeah. So now third down and 27 following the penalty. Flacco dumps it off to Rice. Well, we know Rice can pick up a first down on fourth and 29, but not third and 27, as he did against San Diego last year. I still think he might have been a yard short on that one, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what the Ravens have in mind here on fourth and 21. Well, it's a two-possession game, and, and unfortunately, with some circumstances at the end of the half, Jimmy Johnson at the half talked about how precious points are. If they would have had one of those three points in those decisions John Harbaugh made, it'd be a one-possession game. Blanco fires downfield. Goss waits the catch. Camden Goss to the Green Bay 18-yard line, a 63-yard connection. This is unbelievable that the Packers can allow this to happen. Let's see what happens in the coverage. Morgan Burnett, you got your two safeties playing on top of each other in the middle of the field. Do not understand that coverage in that situation at all. From the 18-yard line, to the outside, touchdown, Dallas Clark. That is an unbelievable sequence of plays back to back by the Baltimore Ravens. What a great catch by Dallas Clark. Watch him pull it back to him one handed. That is outstanding. Right after the 63 yard reception by Doss on fourth and 21. Tucker, the extra point. Ravens have pulled to within two. That is unbelievable. I can't, I can't understand what the Green Bay Packers were doing in that fourth down situation. They're still trying to figure it out on the sidelines. Here's Dallas Clark, your tight end, working against Jerron McMillan. And that's just a great catch. Awesome. Catch. In a tight space right there. But the fourth down, I mean, I, I don't know what they were doing in the secondary to allow Tannen Doss to be that open under those conditions. Let's go back and take a look. Here's Tan and Doss right here. Now I want you to watch Morgan Burnett, 42. There he is. Now here comes your second safety. He's in the middle of it. They're stacked on top of each other and they allow Tan and Doss to run right past them. Yeah, Jerron McMillan looks like he tripped up. He fell down and that's what made the opening. So Tan and Doss, who tried out for the Green Bay Packers on September 3rd, was not signed to a contract. Signed with the Ravens six days later, having a career day. All right, now let's take everybody back to the end of the first half. Now, there was a, there was a first and goal at the four-yard line. They get down to third and goal, fourth and goal at the one-yard line. They elect to go for it. Mike McCarthy, an opportunity to push Baltimore back on a hold, declines the penalty. They go fourth and one. John Harbaugh goes for it. They miss. There's three points missed right there. Would have made it 3-3. Then at the end of the half, after they take a shot down the field with only 12 seconds left, they decide to take one more shot down the field. It's a sack fumble. Green Bay picks it up, runs it down with two seconds left, is able to kick a field goal to get it to six to nothing at that time. In either one of those situations, you take the three points away right now, it's 20 to 19, the Baltimore Ravens on top. That's if everything played out of the second half the same way. Well, yeah, course. but you know everybody's going to second guess yep. John Harbaugh in both of those situations. John Harbaugh is going to second guess John Harbaugh in those situations. So now it's the Packers with 2.04 remaining to take over at their own 20. Ravens have all three of their timeouts. On 
First down is Lacey into the pile. And now we hit the two-minute warning. Flacco. Dallas Clark. What a catch. Two-point lead. Ravens have all three of their timeouts. Lardarius Webb back on the field for the Ravens. Second down and nine. It's Rodgers. He fooled just about everybody. But then is chased down by Ihedebo. Gain of six for Aaron Rodgers. Ravens use their first timeout. Well, we just talked to you about the scenario that happened at the end of the first half. Let's go back and take a look at that. The Green Bay Packers missed the field goal here. So it's still three to nothing. Baltimore gets the ball back with 20 seconds left. A long play here on the first one, ended up throwing it away. At that point, maybe it's best just to go in at halftime. You haven't been playing well. They stay aggressive. There's your sack fumble. Dayton Jones picks it up, rumbles down the field, gets tackled just in the nick of time to allow this attempt to go six nothing at the end of the first half. Jimmy Johnson talked about it at the halftime about how precious points are. Great example right there. Packers must get to the 30 for a first down. And they do. It is Jermichael Finley. Finley finally knocked out of bounds as he takes it all the way down to the Ravens. 21-yard line. 51 yards on the catch and run. Jermichael Finley. Working one-on-one -on -one against Matt Elam. Just that little separation there at the top. The only criticism, Kenny, stay in bounds, yep. right? Let that clock, clock keep rolling. So a new set of downs for the Packers. Ravens have two timeouts. Lacey. Lacey tripped up by McPhee. Time for a game break with Joel Klatt. Joel. All right, thank you, Kenny. A great one in Buffalo. Marquise Goodwin from Thaddeus Lewis. Great play to tie it up at 24, and they are in overtime in Buffalo. Kenny. How are these receivers getting behind everybody in critical situations this afternoon? Safeties don't understand they got to be the deepest man on the field anymore, Carol. So the Bills and Bengals in overtime coming up after our game. It's the Pepsi game break with Kurt Harry. That's Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy. They'll have <laughs> scores and highlights from around the league. And they'll get you ready for America's game of the week. Most of you will see the Patriots and the Saints. That's coming up on the Pepsi game break. Second down and 11. We welcome those of you who have just joined us as Eddie Lacy takes the handoff from Aaron Rodgers and brings it down to the 14-yard line. Ravens use their final timeout with a minute 32 remaining. They trail the Packers by two. Green Bay lost two of their wideouts, James Jones and Randall Cobb, two injuries in the first half. Jordy Nelson with a 64-yard touchdown reception in the third quarter. That gave the Packers a 16-3 lead, but the Ravens have scored all 17 of their points in the second half. Joe Flacco with a pair of touchdown passes here in the fourth quarter. So now the Ravens are out of timeouts, a minute 32 remaining. Third down and three. So either the Packers pick up a first down and can run out the clock, or if they're held, they'll send out the field goal unit. Smart play by the rookie. Well done, Eddie Lacy. Knowing the situation in the game, you know, for a first-year player, great job. Get the first down and get down. Ravens out of timeouts. 
So the Packers will be able to run out the clock. Eddie Lacy with a season high 120 yards on the ground. America's game of the week up next. Many of you will see the Saints and the Patriots. The Green Bay Packers will host Cleveland next week. Packers will go to three and two while the defending Super Bowl champion Ravens will drop to three and three. This is their only home game in a stretch of 48 days. Ravens on the road the next two and for the Packers their first win in Baltimore since they defeated the Colts at Memorial Stadium back in September of 74. A gritty performance by both teams. Green Bay with the injuries and adjusting and then the Ravens hanging in there the entire time had a shot a tremendous completion on fourth and long to really give them an, an extra opportunity to steal this game at the end. Super Bowl MVPs two of the last three years. Rodgers and Flacco Super Bowl winning coaches. Packers win it 1917 for Moose and Goose. This is Kenny Albert the Pepsi game break coming up after these messages.